Hi guys, in this video, we will be going through properties of various sorting algorithms, compare them and form a cheat sheet for ourselves. Now, there are two types of sorting algorithms, comparison based and non-comparison based. In comparison based sorting algorithms, as the name suggests, we compare the elements to each other and sort the array given to us. In non-comparison based algorithms, we use other information related to keys and all and we perform other operations. The examples of non-comparison based algorithms are radix, sort, count, sort, bucket, sort and so on. But in this video, we will be comparing six comparison based algorithms. These are the most important ones. Bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, quick sort and heap sort. Now let's see which are the properties that we are going to compare for these sorting algorithms. The first one will obviously be time complexities. So we are going to compare all the three cases, best case, average case as well as worst case. For sorting algorithms, the best case should obviously be when the array given to us is already sorted. So we will require minimum number of operations to sort the array. The worst case will be when we need to perform maximum number of operations to sort the given array. And in average case, we consider all the possible inputs and we take the average of the time complexities for all of those cases and see what is the average time complexity, right? Next, we will be considering auxiliary space complexity. In auxiliary space complexities, we don't consider the space that the input array takes. Instead, we just see how much extra space does our algorithm require. Next property that we are going to compare is online. So we're going to check if our algorithm is online or not. What does it mean? If an algorithm is online, it means that we don't have to give all the input data beforehand itself. That means if an algorithm is running, in between of that, if we put more data, if we give more input data, it is completely fine. The algorithm will continue as it is. It will not get disturbed, right? So in an online algorithm, you can keep giving data and it will continue the sorting algorithm as it is and it will not get disturbed, which is the next property we're going to see. We are going to see if our algorithm is stable. Consider we are sorting an array which has same input multiple times. Say in our array, we have two, three times. Sometimes it might be a requirement that we want that these elements that are coming multiple times, we need them in the sorted array in the order in which they came. That is, that if there were three twos, then in our sorted array, those twos should be in the same order in which they came in in the input array. So let me explain more. So if there are say five ones. Now, the one that came first should be the one that appears first in the sorted array. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to check if our algorithm is stable or not. And the next and the last property is to check whether our algorithm is in place or not. If the algorithm is in place, it will not take any extra space. That means the auxiliary space complexity will be order of one. So these are the properties that we usually compare to decide which sorting algorithm should we use. So now let's get started. Let's start with our first and most basic algorithm, the bubble sort. What do we do in bubble sort? We compare the adjacent elements and if they are not in the correct order, we swap them. So essentially the first iteration, what we are doing is we are bubbling the highest element to its correct position. Assuming that we are going to be sorting all our arrays in ascending order for all the algorithms, I'm not going to be saying it again and again. For now, I'm just assuming that we are sorting in ascending order. If it has to be in descending order, we just have to compare the opposite direction, right? Now, after we are done bubbling up the highest element to its correct position, next we are going to bubble the next highest element to its correct position. What we are going to do is just keep comparing the adjacent elements and the, what will happen finally is that the second largest element will come to its position. Then the third largest element and the fourth largest element and so on. So for each of the elements, we will do this bubbling. So uh, it will be order of n square, right? So the worst case will be order of n square say it is not at all in sorted order. In bubble sort, there's an optimization possible. Say the array given to us is already sorted. Then in the first time when we keep comparing the adjacent elements, there will be no swapping happening, right? Because all of them are already in correct position. So since there is no bubbling up happening in the first iteration itself, we can just see that, okay, the array is already sorted and we don't need to do this again and again. So the best case, when the array is already sorted, we can keep a flag and we can tra keep track that, okay, there were no swaps happening, so it is already sorted. So order of complexity in that case will be order of n, right? Worst case will be order of n square. Now, are we using any extra space over here? No, right? So space complexity is order of one because in that array itself, we are doing the swapping. We are not using any extra space. Next to check is if our algorithm is online. So what if we add new data in middle of the algorithm, right? So there will be some elements that have already bubbled up to their position. That is the highest elements. 
now if we add more elements it is not going to work right because we are bubbling up the elements if we add in the end it is just going to mess up so no this is not an online algorithm is it stable yes it is why is that now see if there are two elements that have same property right so if it is two and two obviously we are not going to swap them so they will be in the same order because we are not going to swap those properties right so it will be stable is it in place since we are not using any extra space it is order of one so yes it is in place let's come to a second algorithm that is the selection sort what do we do in selection sort we choose the minimum element in our array and then we put it to the first place by swapping those two elements then we choose the second minimum element and then we swap it with the element in the second place and put it in the right place right then we choose the third minimum element fourth minimum element and so on so basically what we are doing is we dividing our array into two sub parts one is the sorted one and one is the non sorted one we are always finding the minimum element in the non sorted one and putting it in the first place right so we are going to make the sorted array bigger by one one position all the time so we'll have to do this n times right so finding the minimum element will be order of n and we will have to do it n times so it will be order of n square in the worst case but what if the array is already sorted in that case also we will always be looking for the minimum element right so even if you are not swapping we will obviously be looking for the minimum element in the array right so even in the best case the complexity is order of n square so obviously in the in the average case also it is order of n square so in selection sort it does not matter if the array was sorted or not it is not dependent on distribution for all the three cases the order of complexity is order of n square right what is the space complexity it is order of one only we are not using any extra space right we are swapping there itself now is it online no because if we keep adding the elements then it will get disturbed right because again we are maintaining two sub arrays it is sorted and not sorted what is the new elements that come were supposed to be the sorted array right so it gets disturbed so it is not online is it stable it is not we'll discuss this point is it in place yes it is in place because we are not using any extra space the order the space complexity is order of one now why have i said that the algorithm is not stable because we are doing swapping right so say when i put the minimum element to the first place the element that would have been there say the largest element it gets swapped at the wrong place right because we are not swapping edges and elements over here it could be swapped with a random position altogether so that is why it is not stable if our requirement is that our algorithm should be stable we can still use selection sort by making a small tweak in it what is that so instead of swapping the minimum element we can move it one by one how we do in insertion sort we'll discuss that instead of swapping what we do is we shift the elements one by one when we swap the adjacent elements the order does not get messed up right but if i am swapping with a completely random index then it is going to get messed up the algorithm is not stable but we can make it stable by making this small change our next algorithm is insertion sort what do we do in insertion sort we again maintain two sub arrays the sorted one and the non sorted one we take one element from the non sorted one and we insert it in its right place by shifting the elements one by one now for each of the elements we will have to do it right so in the worst case it will be order of n square but if the array is already sorted we don't have to insert it in its right position right because it is already in its right position so we don't have to do those shifting things again and again for the n elements so we just check once and we come to know that okay they are in their right position so they don't need any shifting right so in best case it will be order of n worse in average we can say it is order of n square are we using any extra space no right we are performing there itself since we are not using any extra space we can say it is in place right is it online yes it is online and this is actually the most important part of insertion sort we'll discuss this is it stable yes it is right because we are comparing the adjacent elements and moving the element one by one right so it is stable the order is not getting messed up since we are swapping only the adjacent elements we are shifting it one by one now the most important property for insertion sort is that it is online so actually there is a question that i have discussed on my channel median of stream of integers i have discussed over there also that we can use insertion sort over there right and this is actually a very common question that is asked that if there is a stream of integers coming that is the integers will keep coming all the data is not given to us beforehand which sorting algorithm should we use 
and it will be insertion sort because even if the data is coming as the algorithm is running we just have to keep inserting in its right position right so it does not get messed up because it is fine we are anyway going to insert the element that is going to come in its right position by moving the elements one by one so this is the most important part plus in best case it is considered that if the array was already sorted then it happens in an order of n right that is why insertion sort is highly preferred if the one the if array was almost sorted second if we don't have the complete data in the starting and we need an online algorithm there is a good to know variation of insertion sort that is binary search insertion sort what we actually do is that instead of moving the element one by one to put it into its right position what we do is we use binary search to find its correct position and then put it but even in that case the worst case complexity will still be order of n square but yeah it is a good to know thing our next algorithm is merge sort it is a divide and conquer algorithm so basically what we do is we take our array we find the middle element and then we split the array into two halves that is the first half and the second half and then we sort them individually and once we are done doing that we merge them so we are going to keep doing that recursively right so we have a huge array we divide it into two halves then again this first half we are going to divide into two halves the second half also we are going to divide into two halves and so on and then we are going to start merging these sorted arrays until we have one big array right while merging though we need some extra space because we have to see in the two arrays that we are going to merge we are going to keep two pointers and keep comparing those two pointers and keep inserting it in a temporary array and then copy it so for merging we need some extra space right now to understand the time complexity we could use master algorithm but if you have to understand it in simple terms since we are dividing in a two halves all the times right so how many times are we going to do it log n times two two times right so log n and each time we have to merge those arrays right so we have to go through all the elements at least once while merging them right and we are going to do this n times so it is going to be n log n right and it doesn't matter if it is already sorted we are anyway going to divide it and then merge it right so in all the three cases it is going to be n log n so again this is also like selection sort it does not depend if the array is sorted or not it is independent of the distribution of data so n log n and while merging since we need some extra space it is going to be order of n since we are going to need the space of the array itself right that same amount of space we need so it is not going to be in place is it online no it is not why because we have already divided our array into two halves and we are going to merge them now if more data comes how are we going to accommodate no right so it is not online is it stable yes because we are going to merge the elements pointer by pointer right so this element this element we are going to compare and put them this element this element we are going to put them right so no way swapping or anything is happening so the order is not going to messed up so it is stable now there are two good to know interesting points about merge sort one that it is really preferred for lengthless why is that because for merging we needed some extra space right order of n but in lengthless we won't need this extra space because when we are comparing two elements we can just change the next element it is pointing to right we don't need to keep a temporary lengthless and then save in that only we can make them point to any element we want it is easier and we don't need any extra space so it is really preferred for lengthless than for arrays the second interesting point is that it is used for external sorting now what is external sorting this is actually a very good question that is asked in a lot of interviews as well so consider that you given a huge chunk of data and it is not possible to handle such amount of data in once so what you do is you divide it into chunks you sort them separately and then you merge that data right so this is essentially a merge sort right so we using merge sort for external sorting if you have a huge file you divide into sub parts you sort them and then you merge those sorted files our next algorithm is also divide and conquer algorithm in this algorithm we choose a pivot and all the elements that are smaller than this pivot we shift them to one side and all the elements that are greater we put them on the other side right and then we keep doing this recursively now how efficient this algorithm works actually depends on how we choose a pivot point now this could we could choose randomly like taking the first element or the last element or we could use say median to find the pivot point if we choose a really good pivot point such that we always divide the array into two parts equal parts so we are dividing into half 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 right so it is going to be log n 
and how many times are we going to do it n times right we have to swap the elements we have to check whether they are in right position or not so in that case if we have a really good pivot point then it is going to be n log n right but if we choose a bad pivot point such that it divides our array into two sub arrays such that one has only one element and all the n minus one elements the, all the rest of the elements are on the other side right so that will mean just that we are taking one one element one by one right and in worst case the time complexity is going to be n square and that is really bad about quicksort that if we don't choose a good pivot point then the order of complexity becomes n square which is not good average will still be n log n right are we using any extra space no right we are just going to swap the elements and make sure that they are in the correct position so if they are lesser than pivot we are going to swap them and make sure that they are in the left side and if they are greater than pivot then we are going to swap and make sure that they are on the right side but we don't need any extra space so it is order of 1 so we can say that it is in place as well right is it online no right because if we get more elements randomly in between it is not possible because we have already divided our array into two parts according to the pivot right so it is not going to work so it is not online is it stable no it is not again why because we are going to swap with random places over here so when we have to put an element on the left side of the pivot or on the right side of the pivot we are going to swap with a random element right so we we are going to mess up the order so no this is not stable now let's come to interesting points related to quick sort when it comes to arrays we prefer quick sort over merge sort why is that because in merge sort we will we were needing an extra space right so we had to uh, while merging we needed an temporary array right that was better for linked list but if we see for linked list quick sort is really messed up because we are not going to swap right so how are we going to do it we need random access so when it comes to arrays quick sort is better since we have random access but when it comes to linked list merge sort is better since we won't need an extra temporary array another variation of quick sort is three way quick sort it is used when the elements are being repeated a lot many times say there are two ten times and we take two as pivot right so we instead of dividing our array into two sub arrays which is less than two and greater than two we are going to divide our array into three parts one will be less than two one will be equal to two and one will be greater than two so instead of dividing into two parts let us less than pivot and greater than pivot we can also do three way quick sort in which the third part will be when it is equal to pivot and that is obviously used when the elements are repeated a lot of times right only then we then only then we need that equal to wala sub array right our final algorithm is heap sort which is based on the structure binary heap what is a binary heap it is a complete binary tree in which the elements are stored in an order for example so there are two types of binary heap max heap and min heap so in max heap what happens the largest element will always be on top and all the elements below will be smaller than that and that will happen for all the sub trees similarly for minimum tree the smallest element will be on the top and the all the elements below will be greater than that element right and that will be there for all the sub trees so for heap sort what we do is we use a max heap so we take all the elements we form a max heap and we can represent the max heap with our array itself we don't need any extra space we can always refer to the left child and the right child by using two into index and two into index plus one so right. array itself is enough so what we do we have the data with us and we convert it into a heap data structure now we have the maximum element on the top and all the elements are below that okay so what we do we take the last element and we take the max element and we swap these two because now we know the max element right so we remove that and now we remove the last element from there because we swapped it so we are basically removing the maximum element and we are heaping fine yet again to explain again so we have max element over here we have last element over here we swap it and we remove this right so now the max element is gone from the tree but now this is no more a heap structure because i have disturbed it right so i have to heapify it again right so every time i remove one element so i remove one max element and keep okay so i have the biggest element then the next time i will keep the second biggest element the next time i will keep the third biggest element right and every time i put an element assign i will have to heapify my structure right and heapification is log n because it's a binary structure right and i will have to do it n times 
so i have to do it anyway if the array is sorted or not every time i keep an element aside i have to heapify it right so again in this case the distribution does not matter the complexity will be n log n are we using any extra space no right as i said that the heap structure can be denoted by the array itself so we don't need any extra space so since we are not using any extra space is it in place yes is it online no because once we have formed the heap structure when new elements are inserted it is going to get disturbed right so no this is not online is it stable no it is not because again for heapification we will be swapping with random elements right so it is not that we are swapping with the adjacent elements or anything like that so it is not going to be stable the order is going to messed up now that we have compared all the properties and we have our cheat sheet ready let's make some observations if you notice the only algorithm that is online among all of these is insertion sort right so any time the requirement says that you know you need the stream of data of integers or the entire data is not given in the beginning you should always consider insertion sort is there any way you can use it okay and if you notice the only algorithm among these that required extra space was merge sort right for an array for merging it requires extra space so the only one that was not in place was merge sort again yeah selection and quick both of these can be converted into stable so the original ones are not stable but yeah you can make some uh, modifications and make them stable the intent of this video was to compare all the properties because we don't use these algorithms in our day to day coding but these are really good concepts and we can use these concepts to solve many more questions and questions related to sorting are very common not just for college students for campus placements but also for sd1 sd2 roles i know i have not gone through line by line code of each of these algorithms that is because i think there are already a lot of videos on this already a lot of content but like me i think a lot of people get confused between which one does what what are the properties so let me know if you liked it or let me know if you want any change also please let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on the non comparison based sorting algorithms like radix uh, account bucket etc and for those algorithms since those are not very common ones do you want me to make like separate videos covering each one of them or a comparison video like this and last but not the least please don't forget to like share and subscribe it will mean a lot to me thank you so much